This week, Apple made some major announcements at its Worldwide Developer Conference that will impact tech users across the globe. I'm Jordan Hart, and I'm going to tell you the tea that happened at WWDC. Some of my tea water. Okay, let's start with iOS 18. Some of the most talked about features that iOS 18 will make possible are the changes to the messaging app. You can schedule messages, make them bold, italic, format them how you want. Another amazing feature is tap to cash. You can tap your phones to a friend to send them money or receive it without having to track them down after dinner and get them to send their part. A few other things coming along with iOS 18 include an updated map, a more customizable home screen, and a whole new photo library that's much more easy to search your photos. If you're like me, you have embarrassingly over 10,000 pictures in your photo library right now, and Apple is making it so much easier to search those photos, identify folks in your library, and find those pictures way faster than just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling some more. Next up, we have Apple Intelligence, which is Apple's official entrance into the AI arms race. Apple Intelligence will make using your device so much easier with new features like custom emojis called Genmojis, an image generator, email summarization in the mail app, a math notes feature that will allow you to use your Apple Pencil to write out math equations and quickly get an answer, and an all new AI powered Siri. A lot of these features will be available on device. And for more complex requests, Apple has private cloud compute, a way to send your questions to a larger AI model without risking your privacy. Apple promises that your personal data was not used to train Apple intelligence. This will set a new privacy standard in AI, which has been a big concern for users who wonder if AI models are using their personal data to train. All these new features are great, but to have the full capabilities of Apple intelligence, you'll need to have an iPhone 15 Pro or later. So if you're like me and just upgraded your phone last year, you're probably gonna miss out on the cool new AI phone stuff. Next up is Siri, who's getting some AI superpowers. She'll be able to add something to your notes app, update a friend's contact card, navigate through apps, handle more complex requests, or find a photo in your photo library for you. It's because she has on-screen awareness, so she'll be able to handle much more complex tasks. But be warned, Siri will look a little bit different in iOS 18. Instead of popping up as a bubble on your screen, she'll highlight the whole frame in a ring of light. I've been an iPhone owner since Siri was first introduced. And I have to be honest, I don't really use her for that much. It's much easier for me to go to Safari and look something up myself. But with an AI-powered Siri, I think I would reach for her a lot more to help me with my day-to-day -day tasks on my phone. And that brings us to our last topic, OpenAI and Apple's partnership. Apple didn't get too much into it at the WWDC keynote, but details about the partnership are emerging. What we do know is, is that Apple has integrated ChatGPT into Mac and iOS devices to allow Siri to handle the harder questions. But Apple emphasized that you're in control. If you don't want Siri to tell ChatGPT your question, you don't have to. Sources say that neither Apple nor OpenAI are paying each other in this partnership. Instead, they say that since Siri is integrated with ChatGPT, more users will naturally start to use the chatbot. This deal has been teased for weeks, and personally, I was expecting a little bit more from OpenAI, but I'm excited that Siri is getting some high-powered backup from ChatGPT. So we've covered the highlights of WWDC, but Apple announced a plethora of cool updates, including iPadOS 18, Mac Sequoia, and more. In fact, I live-logged the whole thing. Check out the recap on our website.